In today's video, we're going to talk about what who is actually a debt collector. With the Supreme Court decision, it has made it totally unclear to some people, including myself when I had first uh, looked at this. It was like, what do they mean? A debt collector, this is a debt collector, and this is not a debt collector, even though they're all collecting debts. Even though they're all collecting debts. So, just so you know, with the Supreme Court decision, a debt collection company who buys your debt, and they don't collect debt for other companies. So, they just solely buy debt and don't collect it for other companies. That debt collector is, in a sense, in a different category because what they stated is that debt collectors who collect for others so i'm going to read through this here just for clarification not to say that we don't fight things the same way because it's kind of a lot of gray areas and i think that even when they put this together they because they don't go through this like it's it's different when a person experiences problems with a debt collector and they know this is what a debt collector does but when someone has never experienced going through having a debt collector call them having them harass you on the phone having them sending letters in the mail having them contact your employer to try to find you having them trying to contact your neighbors trying to find you or any references that you put on the application that it the that individual which happens to be our lawmakers they don't experience this type of stuff so i don't know who they get their information from or how people feel about this about what they're experiencing but i can just tell you the way that the law was written it it, it gives a, a door wide open for debt collection companies but it still kind of closes the door on them because it puts a lot of responsibility in their lap when they buy your old debts. So please pay attention to me. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. So according to the CFPV, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, debt, collection, debt collectors that are covered under the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and Regulation F, a debt collector, is defined as. Now, Regulation F is additional uh, rules and regulations under CFPB. The Fair Debt Collections Practices Act was always there uh, after Dodd-Frank, back when President Obama was president, they made some additions based off of the, the, what people were going through. So back then when they did it, they did say, well, what are people actually experiencing when they deal with these debt collectors? Okay, let's fix that. And then later, after 2016 or 2017, hold on a sec, I'm going to get you the Supreme Court ruling. All right, so I got the Supreme Court ruling. And Justice Gorsuch wrote the, uh, the uh, opinion on this, which was for the prevailing side, which stated, and, and, and it came from Henson versus Santander Consumer USA. This is the deal. With this decision here, this is 2017. With this decision, what it did is it said that if a debt buyer buys your debt, they're not restricted under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. That's what it says. So you can go read that yourself. Henson v. Santander Consumer USA. Santander Consumer USA was buying debt. Buying debt and collecting on it. Buying debt and collecting on it. From this Supreme Court decision, they said that if you buy the debt and you do not uh, collect for other companies, like you only buy your debt and you collect it, that takes you out of the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. That's just, that's the decision. You can go look at that yourself. Henson v. Santander Consumer USA. Debt collectors were all over the streets, popping uh, bottles, uh, fireworks going off, everything, because 
it stated that if you do not collect debt for others, then you don't have to worry about it. So now what, what, what started to happen, and you, you can see this in your own documents. If you're being, uh, if a, if a debt collector is coming after you or you being sued by a debt collector and you said, well, I thought Resurgent had that debt. They bought that debt, but then they have it going to, uh, LVNV funding or one of these other companies to collect it. And, and then you see this word assigned. Assigned. You've seen that word a lot. Assigned. See, when that door was open, and they've always had it where they said assigned or assumed, or they've always had that stuff in there. But this here, this decision made that very uh, powerful for them. Because when they did that, they did not have to stand under the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. But don't worry, the door is still open for you because no matter what, no matter what Supreme Court says anyone, they still have to prove their claimed amount. So no matter what, you always have that in your back pocket. Make the debt collector who uh, buys your debt and they're under the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, that means that they have to do a full debt validation. Or if they're buying the debt and uh, uh, not collecting it for other companies they're just buying their debt and collecting on it and they you know in with the decision they're not under the fair debt collection practice act but i would still say that you would still validate that debt and make sure they prove the claim so in a way it's just a play on what you're asking them to do so they, they, yeah they don't have to do a debt validation per the fair debt collection practice act but they have to do a, a debt validation to prove the claimed amount so if they try to come back and say, well, we don't have to do a debt validation. We can just submit the documents that we have. Okay, well, prove the claim with the documents that you have. Show me how you say I owe this money. So uh, debt collectors that are covered under under Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Regulation F, a debt collector is defined as any person who uses an instrument of interstate commerce or mail in any business whose principal pur purpose is debt collection. Any person who regularly collects or attempts to collect debts owed to another person. A creditor who, in the process of collecting its own debts, uses a name other than the creditor's own, which would indicate that a third person is collecting the debt. For purposes of 12 CRF 1006.22E only, any person who uses any instrumentality of interstate commerce or mail in any business whose principal purpose is to enforce enforcement of security interest, which security interest would be in the debt that they purchase. Debt collectors that are not covered. A person is not a debt collector under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Regulation F when the person collects another's debt in isolated incident, in instances. A person is not a debt collector under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Regulation F when the person collects another's Debt in isolated in instances. I'm going to read it again. I told you that this is very great, very confusing. Debt collectors that are not covered. A person is not a debt collector under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Regulation F when the person collects another's debts in isolated instances that could be maybe uh i don't know that's like very broad that's very broad in up uh, in isolated instances that's very broad uh so if we break that down say that um you know you hire a person to go to someone's house and say, hey, would you want to, you need to pay this bill? Or say that you have a company and you're trying to collect 
on a specific debt, like it's just not something that you're constantly having done, uh, maybe that would be counted under it. Maybe you are a debt collector, but you don't go out and buy debt. You have people come to you and, you know, you go and uh, approach one of their clients about collecting on that debt. That's a very open-ended, uh, uh, broad statement there. Debts under the person's own name that the person originated. Debts under the person's own name that the person originated. Debts that the person originated and then sold but continued to service. We see that a lot with mortgages and student loans. That's what they actually said here. Debts owed or due or asserted to be owed or due to another that were not in default when they were obtained. Debts that are obtained as security for a commercial credit contract, such as accounts receivable finance. Debts incident incidental to a bona fide fiduciary relationship or escrow agreement, for example, a debt held in an institution's trust department of mortgage loan escrow for taxes and insurance. Debts for another person who is related by common ownership or corporate control. Others that are not covered also include Officers or employees of a creditor who collect debts owed to the creditor in the creditor's name. And then legal process servers. So that was a lot. So in this, just to review, just to review, and the reason why this whole uh, thing has came up and caused a lot of confusion is that because of the 2017 Santander versus uh, Henson versus the Santander Consumer USA, when a debt collection company buys debt and they are not collecting debt for others, that's what that's what the main difference of this is. When they're not collecting debt, debts for others. In a sense, they consume the original creditor position, and they're not technically under the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, but they still have to validate, verify how they came up with that claimed amount that they're trying to collect from you. So it's just like it's just a, I guess you could just say it's like a play on words, but there are certain things that they don't have to uh, abide by according to the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act simply because they're not collecting debt for other companies. And I know that it's very confusing. Uh, the the way that we've just continued to do things is that we just go as if, uh, even if a debt collector buys debt and they're not collecting for others, we still just go down the same route as, as if they're under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And it does seem that a majority of the debt collection companies will still go through that same process of proving that debt as if they are under the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, even though they're only a portfolio buyer that's buying debt and collecting it for themselves. All right. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at the creditrepairshop.com. Watch video What Makes Us Different. So you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, yourthenumber3scores.com. Grab your TransUnion, Equifax, Experian credit report. There is nothing. There is simply nothing more important than knowing what's on your credit reports. I had a, uh, 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 a person call me last week. Credit scores was in 730s. Uh, scores dropped all the way to the 650s in less than a month and a half. And constantly during the conversation, they had resistance about finding out what's on their credit reports. You know your score dropped that, that, that many points, like oh, what, almost 100 points? You know the score has dropped almost 100 points. You say you haven't done anything wrong. 
that you're not doing anything wrong. You're not missing payments. You're not doing anything wrong to, to have this happen. But what we know is that it did happen. And so if something like that happens, that means that you do not know what's going on on your credit reports. And it is imperative. It is imperative that you always know what is on your reports. And you need to get alerts when anything, when anything changes on your report, you need to know. Because it's so, this is the thing. With credit, it's not one of the things that can get fixed overnight. Your fault or someone else's fault is not something that can get fixed overnight. Your fault or someone else's fault. So if you are alerted, to, the sooner you are alerted to something that's happening, the sooner you can get it fixed. The, late, the, the delay in the process of knowing what's going on, see, uh, you know the scores. You know the scores. You're up on the scores. You get the free apps for the scores. But knowing everything that is going on on your reports at all times, the free apps are not going to give you that. They're just not going to give you that. So it's it it's totally up to you. But this is one of those decisions where if I could know right now what's going on today with my credit rather than letting stuff happen and then having to follow up and find out what is actually going on, I would rather know now because it helps avoid the pain in the future and it helps you get over the pain faster. So if you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com. Link is below this video and you can see it on the screen there. If you have debt collectors coming after you early, regardless if it's a portfolio company trying to sue you, I mean, trying to come after you, sending you the letters, for the for debt collection, it does not matter. Still, you want to still go through the same protocol. If it's a debt that's past the legal statute of limitations for them to collect, you want to send them the statute of limitations letter that I'm going to give you. You don't need to do a debt validation uh, like the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act state because the debt is past the legal statute of limitation, and all debt collectors and original creditors are under the, the statute of limitations for collecting debt in your state legally have they can try to collect on it but you have no legal obligation to pay it next is uh i give you a cease and desist collection activities letter which is very good to make debt collectors know that you are not going to be walked over that you're going to make them have to prove everything that they're claiming it's like a head start that you get like if they're going to try to take you to court this is like a head start and it can potentially stop them from taking you to court because it's giving them a look at what they have, a review at what they have to see if they're going to have enough if they do decide to take you to court. And then I give you a debt validation letter to go back and forth with them. Very important because some of the times they're just going to go back and forth to see if you're going to quit. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel, post your questions, comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, President and Founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.